first you have it's literally the sound of rushing water I mean all over the world shamans say this it's white noise I think it's the sound of one chemical regime at the synaptic domain meeting another chemical regime and there is this brief period of chaos then the displacing by the drug molecule of the ordinary agonist to the receptor and then it it's like tinkling far away tinkling bells or chiming and it comes closer and now at this point the mind goes to meet it with a projection the mind always goes to meet the nervous system and they meet somewhere in cyberspace and the projection goes on to it so for me it's a it's a Nepalese it's like a Nepalese marching band or it's an elf band and I I hear them coming and they're just over the hill and they're piping away and and it's you know and they're on their way and very quickly it becomes much much louder and I'm just flooded with this sense of the presence of uh, of the elfin potential and then uh, it, it condenses and, and uh, you know those of you who are veterans of these things know that I like to quote Philo Judaeus on the Logos the Logos was this informing voice that was the sine qua non of Hellenistic spirituality everybody was trying to get a connection to the Logos because it spoke the truth well, Philo Judaeus, who happened to be an exact contemporary of Christ, born before, died after, wrote a whole 15 volumes of commentary on the syncretic religions of his day. And at one point, he's discussing the etymology of the word Israel. Interestingly, the word Israel means he who sees, sees God. And so Philo Judaeus is rapping about this. And he says, what would be the more perfect logos? And then he answers his own question. He says, the more perfect logos would go from being heard to being beheld without ever crossing over a, a, a noticeable moment of transition. Well, that's what the approach of this elfin band is. It begins as a distant sound. It gets louder and louder and louder, and at a certain volume, it begins to spread out into the visual processing, and then whatever it was as sound gives way to what it is as, as light, as thing beheld. Well, these ikaros that these people sing in the Amazon are the same kind of thing. I mean, you make a tone and it's a blue ribbon four inches across that hangs in the air and then you just... and, you know, it hangs there and then you can reach out and touch it. Well, tones like that are literally like broad, broad uh, paintbrushes when you paint with tone but when you modulate with syntax you begin to discover you can cut lace snowflakes with this stuff and you know you can produce roshocks and you can do other things and I this is just to me the most mysterious thing I mean this is I ask no more than to be in the presence of this it's uh it's beauty beheld it's that within the human organism poised at the apex of animal organization you're able to open this doorway with sound and then unimaginable beauty of an, an of an unimaginable style and quality pours through i mean this alien asymmetric, orthogonal to ordinary expectations kind of beauty that I associate uh, with the absolute other, the transcendent other, yeah.